Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the FMG recall of 90 of 2024 January and uh, guiding you through your minefield of ophthalmology questions. Remember, is again your friendly neighborhood ophthalmologist Shashputre. Okay, so we've all had a tough exam. Well, I would say not really tough, moderate exam. Some easy, some tough. Ophthalmology, I find, is most more easy or solvable than most of them. I hope you all had good luck in doing the exam. So let's do a quick recall. And you can make out, or maybe you cannot make out. I must tell that I am not in the country right now, so it's very difficult for me to put together this presentation. So, which is why it explains the delay. So, I beg of you to forgive me if there are certain delays in the discussion. So, let's start. And here we see our old, old eyes, the logo of Shashwatre, the famous Mona Lisa eyes. Okay, so we come to this beautiful eyes that I am so much in love with, and we start with our presentation. Let's do that. So, the first question is that. An infant that is one and a half years old, well, that's not correct grammar, it should be an infant who is of one and a half years old, exhibits a white pupil reflex. The results of the ultrasound or ultrasonography reveal a calcified intraocular mass and a familial history of enucleation. What is the prognosis? Now, look at this. What we've got is a one and a half year old kid who has a white pupil reflex, and you all know what that means. It means a retinoblastoma. To continue, the results of the USG reveal a calcified intraocular mass. That's correct. It is the calcification, which is the hallmark of retinoblastoma, and a family history of enucleus. So there must have been some other patient with retinoblastoma previously. So what is the prognosis? There's no doubt about this, gentlemen. It's going to be choice B, retinoblastoma. Very well. Next question is identify the instrument shown below. Here you have a SR. That's not Shashwat Ray, but let me tell you, SR is suture releasing forceps okay and artery forceps is limbs forceps is macpherson's forceps and look at this if you see the shape of this angle the angle blades here is the answer is d for macpherson forceps macpherson forceps is usually for tying sutures you know we use it as tying sutures sometimes even releasing them for very fine sutures we tie it with a macpherson this is what it looks like not an easy question for those who haven't seen of thalamic instruments but a legitimate question macpherson forceps is the answer d next question is after a month of cataract surgery a 72 year old patient's vision had decreased he is a known case of diabetes mellitus upon examination the retina displays a honeycomb look and a flower petal pattern on fluorescein angiography now that's a lot of clues here and again so after cataract surgery is a loss of vision okay he's a diabetic on examination a honeycomb like structure so honeycombing area a yellow spot is there and a flower petal appearance on fa now what more clues it require this is obviously cme cystoid macular edema with blurring of vision after cataract surgery remember particularly in diabetics you know they are known to have this is the famous irvin gas syndrome and the fa pattern is very characteristic which is of a flower petal and a typical honeycomb look or a yellowish look sometimes which is called as the the typical Irvin gas syndrome, which is CME, cystoid macular edema. So I hope you all got this correct. What next? Which antitubercular medication results in optic neuropathy accompanied by color vision abnormalities? So remember, we have rifampicin, we have ethambutol, we have INH, and none of the above. Can you remember that here classically is ethambutol? I remember I've always told you about toxic optic neuropathy. The three most common drugs is first and foremost smoking second is alcohol and third is ethambutol remember ethambutol choice b is the answer however you can also have inh remember ethambutol is number one but inh also has been implicated as the second drug of att which may cause optic neuropathy okay this is called as toxic optic neuropathy and the three most important drugs are smoking alcohol as in the butol the answer is ethambutol Next question, which bones are removed or cut during external DCR, okay? Now, this is more of an ENT question, actually. But, however, it laps, overlaps with ophthalmology. And the answer is B, where you make a cut between the maxillary and the lacrimal bone, okay? Remember, DCR is done. Remember, blockage in the nasolacrimal duct, is not? And in the third option, the best option here is to do a DCR, which to connect the DCR stands for dacryocystorhinostomy. So, you connect the lacrimal sac like Rambo sac with the typically you connect it what directly to the middle meters of the nose 
So this is a bone window between the maxillary bone and the lacrimal bone. So this is more, more in the entry, but we've taken it because it overlaps slightly with ophthalmology. Okay, forgive me for stealing a uh, ENT question. What criteria are not included in the definition of severe prolifer non proliferative diabetic novel? Severe NPD. Remember, NPDR we have three stages mild, moderate, and severe. Okay, so the severe, remember, we have this 4 to 1 rule. 4 to 1, what is that in NPDR? Severe, NPDR, remember, 4 to 1 rule. You have to remember this 4 to 1. What is that? 4 is look at the choice here microorganisms or hemorrhages. In all four quadrants of the retina, that's four. So if you have this, it means you have severe NPDR. So it is included. Then look at choice D, venous beading in two or more quadrants. That is two. In two or more quadrants, if you have venous beading, beading means the blood appears, the blood vessel appears to be beaded like this, with small, small circulations like this. This is the four, two. It's two or more quadrants, venous beading. And one choice B Irma's in at least one quadrant, at least one quadrant, but can be more than that. Irma's intra retinal microvascular abnormalities. Four to one, all these three. So A, choice B, and D are all in the definition of severe NPDR. What is not, which is not included, is choice C, new vascularization. Remember, as soon as you get new vascularization, it means that you do not have NPDR anymore, you have PDR. This is a very tricky question because remember, normally we do not teach you about severe NPDR, the 4 to 1 rule we do not teach you. So, however, those of you who have retained your witch during the exam, you might remember that as soon as you get new vascularization, it means that you are into PDR, so it cannot fall in the category of NPDR, is it not? So, those of you who have kept your witch, however, I do not blame you if you don't get this because witch are the last thing to be retained in an exam. But the answer is C. Next question, what is the order of insertion of muscles, of the rectus muscle? Remember what the order means that these are the extraocular muscles which are inserted on the sclera and the order is from the nearest to the furthest away from the limbus. Okay, This order is memorized as M-I-L-S. I now remember it's a recall question. We're not sure in what way they asked the question. But remember, I must tell you the basic answer you should remember. That is the, the mnemonic to memorize is called M-I-L-S, Mills. Mills, that is medial rectus, is inserted closest to the limbus. Second is the inferior rectus, I. It's next closest to the limbus. Third is lateral rectus, L, which is the third closest. And farthest is the superior rectus, S. M-I-L-S, remember, when you connect these, we get this spiral. We get a structure. It's an imaginary line. If we draw, if we uh, join all these points together, we get the imaginary line, which is called the spiral of Tillo. Look at that. Okay. So, medial rectus, this is the closest muscle, 5.5 millimeter away from the limbus. The inferior rectus, the second closest, 6.5 millimeters. Third is lateral rectus, 6.9 millimeters away from the limbus. And finally, the farthest insertion is the superior rectus 7.7 .7 millimeters so closest to the limbus m i l s mills and we have this theoretical line joining them this is a join we call the spiral of tillo a tricky question and not expected from fmg level but nonetheless you cannot say that you cannot ask us this so this remember i am not sure in what form it was asked but remember the closest the order is m i l s just as written here Medial rectus is the closest, then the inferior rectus, then the lateral rectus, and the superior rectus. They are inserted in this order, close to the limbus. Very well. After the spiral of Tiller, an easy one to rack your brains on. Your which which vitamin deficiency causes night blindness, and this is no brainer. Obviously, vitamin A causes deficiency in night blindness. It's not vitamin A deficiency. Is the most common cause of nyctalopia in the world. Next question, what kind of a cataract occurs after blunt trauma? And that also is a standard question. Toxic cataract, incorrect. Metabolic cataract, incorrect. Rosette cataract is the correct answer. And nuclear cataract, of course, incorrect answer is C for rosette cataract after blunt trauma. Is it not? Simple one. That is absolutely standard. What is the first line of treatment on adult glaucoma? Okay, that's an easy one. I've always taught you that the first drug of choice in glaucoma, open hand glaucoma, is going to be prostaglandin analogs. P prostaglandin analogs. So remember, glaucoma, they have not mentioned it clearly actually with angle closure or open angle, but remember, since the treatment of angle closure is always surgical, 
and here there is no surgery mentioned so obviously they're talking about open angle glaucoma so the answer is going to be a prostolin analogs is now the drug of choice so we start with latinoprost bimetoprost it could be any of the prostolin analogs is number one then sudden severe painful loss of vision is caused by lesion now i'm not sure if the choice is correct but optic nerve is the answer when you have optic neuritis the sudden painful loss of vision remember it is worsened by ocular movements looking upwards and inwards particularly optic chiasma does not cause usual loss of vision unless it's bilateral and it's not painful optic tract and visual cortex none of them cause painful loss of vision except optic nerve and that is the correct answer which condition you get a shield ulcer is seen and here we haven't been able to get all the choices but you all know standard question Flictin or conjunctive is incorrect. Atopic conjunctive is incorrect. Shield ulcers are best seen in spring catar, also called as vernal keratoconjunctivitis. Again, a no-brainer, and you should all have got this, my friends. You should really have answered all of them. So spring catar is the answer with the famous shield ulcer. Looks like a shield. What is the most important step in prevention of endophthalmitis after cataract surgery? Intravital antibiotics, no. Remember, it is not the preventive measure. Intravital antibiotics is used for the treatment of post-op endophthalmitis, not preventive measure. Pre-op antibiotics, we do give, but it's not the most important preventive measure. Post-op antibiotics is not the most important preventive. The best answer here is povidone iodine lead cleansing. Remember, I have always told you, my friends, that the most important step which prevents endophthalmitis after cataract surgery is clean the eyelids with betadine or povidone iodine. It cleans, this is a very powerful and lid scrub and it cleans all the bacteria that are present in the lids. Remember, in the eye, the lids and the lashes, eyelids and eyelashes are the most dirtiest parts of the eye which harbor all the bacteria. Optic nerve gliomas. Now, that is a more difficult question. Remember, this is from neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, Sturge Weber syndrome. So, optic nerve gliomas, and this is a more difficult question, there's no doubt about it, remember, are seen in choice A, neurofibromatosis type 1. Okay, remember, we have this NF1 and NF2. NF1 is also called as von reckling horsens disease. And NF1, remember, the most common ocular finding, I think you should know that, is Lish nodules. But they also have optic nerve gliomas, okay. So, remember, the most common ocular finding in NF1, and it has a lot of ocular findings, is the most common is Lish nodules, but the commonest cause of loss of vision is bilateral optic nerve gliomas, okay, NF1. NF2, remember the NF2, neuro, neuroform is type 2, we don't usually have ophthalmic findings, they are more specifically seen in acoustic neuromas, you know, so whenever you see bilateral acoustic neuromas, you think of NF2. The only ophthalmic finding of NF2 is a posterior subcapsular cataract. So the answer here is NF1, where Bilateral optic nerve gliomas, whenever you see, because they're not a common finding, particularly both eyes, you should always suspect neurofibromatosis type 1. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've done all your questions. Actually, there are some more, and but these are the all that we could locate. So overall, I think that you've had about anything between anything between 16 to 20 questions of ophthalmology, which is a huge amount. But I think that most of you would have got this done correctly. Okay. Thank you very much. And all the best from my side.